Uh, we have embarked on a series called Closed Caption. Closed Caption. And if you, you missed last week, really, we talked about how a closed caption is, is for those who are hard of hearing. And we talked about how many have been hard of hearing spiritually and how uh, the people and the children of God ought to be closed captions for those who can't spiritually hear right now. This morning's closed caption will be in it to win it. In it to win it. Do y'all know God didn't create us to lose? Uh, come on. Yeah. Come on. Our God has made us winners. But we don't measure all wins and losses in this life based on the world. Based on worldly achievements. Not saying that we can't uh, have worldly achievements and we can't reach out. God can't lead us to do things in the world. But at the same time, uh, have you ever measured your wins and losses to a worldly achievement? Depending our losses and our wins based off of if we graduated school or if we had a degree or what type of job we possess or uh, what type of achievements or sports achievements we may have had. But I dropped by to tell you this morning, if we are not fulfilling our ministry given to us through Jesus, we are losing. If we are not sharing the gospel of Christ with others, we are losing. If we don't have a relationship with God, we are losing. So you can have all the degrees and, and the best jobs and, and have all the sports accolades in the world. But still be losing. And it's because of the mighty name of Jesus we have a plan to win. We can be prepared to win. And we can have the confidence and the expectation to win. Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor. Say, I'm in it. I'm in it. To win it. To win it. Meet me in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's look at what our plan to win is. Even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to bring or to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like the Jews. To bring the Jews to Christ, when I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share in their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground. Go ahead and highlight common ground. With everyone doing everything I can to save some. So I'm seeking all, but I know I'm going to save some. I do everything to bring and spread the gospel or the good news and share his blessings. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. 
So run to win. Come on. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, trained to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Pray for the church. Dear most high and righteous heavenly father, you are King of kings, Lord of lords. You provided for us. You protected us. You delivered us, God. You healed us, Father. We thank you for all you've done, Father. Thank you for your son. Thank you for this race that you've given us, Father. We ask, God, that we can be dedicated to running the race with the expectation, with the purpose, with the plan of winning, Father. But we ask that we don't make our own plans. That we don't prepare our way, Father. But we don't put our faith in us winning because of us, but because of you, Father. We love you, Father. We ask that we can, uh, in your mighty son's name, Jesus Christ, we ask that we can bring many and all different types of people and backgrounds to you, God. Bless us, Father. Bless those uh, online right now seeking a piece of you, Father. We ask uh, all these things in your sons, precious, holy, righteous, delivering name, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Let the church say, amen. amen. Now notice, Paul, the apostle sport, his objective is to bring many to Christ. Touch your neighbor and say, my sport is bringing many to Christ. And notice uh, when we're talking about the plan, uh, Paul says, even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. And, and Paul's in full recruitment mode for Jesus. And able to, uh, has anyone ever researched or anyone ever experienced being, I know we got someone online and I went through it, anyone ever been recruited for a sport before? No, it's okay, I'll, I'll tell you what it's like. They call you, they butter you up. They call you, they butter you up. They take you to Starbucks. And since you tell you how nice you are and how talented you are, and uh, they bring some shirts and some sweatshirts, and uh, they promise you this, that, and the other, try to give you a mental picture uh, of, of why it's important to sign with us. All right? And I want us to, to notice, right, in order to, to achieve this task, we have to plan to be a slave to all people. And I'm not gonna lie, subconsciously we live with a mindset of I ain't slaving for nobody. We've been subconsciously trained to not be able to slave for anybody. Y'all don't believe me, Noah, uh, he asked me, and this is your, one of your evangelists talking, this. But Noah asked me, Dad, can you throw my plate? I just came from a long day of work, been slaving all day. He says, Dad, can you throw my plate in the trash? <laughs> Boy, I ain't your slave. <laughs> but we have been trained subconsciously to not be willing to slave for anybody. But we see in the text that Paul says, I am a slave to all people. Amen. 
in order to bring me to Christ. It's not comfortable. It's not fun. Oh, I can't spoil too much. Let me take my time with this. But slaving yourself for one person is hard. It's challenging. It's tiring. But as we learn to roll up your sleeves, you will be willing to slave yourself for someone you love. And I believe that Jesus said that you ought to love your neighbor as yourself. So love is what's going to inspire doulos or being a slave to all people. Let's read, let's read. When I was with the Jews, I didn't like that. You're like, hold on now. I was with the plan until you start talking about slaves for people. Let's read. Uh, when I was with the Jews, I lived like the Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was there, when I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to to the law. I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the gospel of Jesus and share in its blessings. If we want to win, we have to make sure we are able to adapt and meet people where they're at. There's so many different types of people that we can bring to Christ. Faithful and faithless, traditional and non-traditional, moral and immoral, sick and healthy, weak and strong, gay and straight, black and white, American and Afghanistan. We all come on, come on, come on. Come on. can be brought to Jesus. And instead of arguing and, and being combative, we must find and plan to find common ground. I was just going to myself down, sorry. Instead of trying to fight people to Jesus, we try to shame people to Jesus. But the scripture and Paul says a tool and our plan has to be finding the common ground. Yeah. What can we agree on? Come on. What about our lives are similar? to why we can't talk and why we can't slave for people if, if, if we started looking at the common ground don't you realize that we got more in common than we do different let's find the common ground let's read it do you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. 
They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an external prize. So I run, I run with purpose in every step. And I'm not shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear after that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Leah, give me Leah, give me Noah, give me Amari. Amari, okay, James, James, give me James. Somebody. 
right? And what's, what's interesting is we have always, we have the devil trying to stop it. His minions trying to stop us from running this race, right? And, 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 and keep going! And they're tired. And, and, and see, see, they're tired. They're tired. They're tired. They're, they're exhausted. Come on, bring your brother and sister. And Jesus, and anyone that get tired of running this race, and there's always someone trying to keep you. I don't care. It may the devil may be using your mama to not reach someone, right? Uh, uh, he may he may be using your wife or your husband or your brother or your sister. James really represents a lot of people that could be in our lives, right? And how how they really uh, can't can't and just just hey, oh that that brother ain't good enough. He ain't spiritual enough. Uh, uh, he he. Uh, about the kingdom business, but sometimes we gotta ignore the voices and still continue to try to bring people along on this race. Keep going! I need, I need y'all to test your dream. And you'll notice don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. You notice it was easier to get them across the first time. And the second time. But the more you run this race, the harder it's going to be. You're going to trip. You're going to fall. But then you got to get back up. Keep running, keep running, keep running.
he put in no work. I got zero interceptions. I went from eight to zero. I went to 12 and 0 to 5 and 5. So when you don't put and prepare to win, what happens is you lose. It takes spiritual discipline to win in, in this race that we're running? Are we fasting? Are we praying? Are we reading scripture? Are we fellowshipping? Are we meditating on the goodness of Jesus? Are we confessing? Y'all didn't know confessing was a spiritual discipline. Y'all yeah. ever try to keep something in your, in your own spirit to yourself? And that thing just fester and grow away. Uh, yeah. You better confess. <laughs> Abstinence is a spiritual discipline. And we're not just talking about from sexual relationships. Sometimes what do you need to abstain to, to help your relationship and help you on this race? It could be people. It could be places. If we were not in training with the intent to win, what will happen is we'll be out of the race. These are the things that will keep us in shape to not only run the race, but be in it to win it. And let's make sure that we're just not preaching the gospel, but actually living it. And just there's going to be roadblocks on this race. We're going to be trying to bring people with us, and we're going to get tired of their attitude. We're going to be trying to bring people with us to Jesus and we're going to be tired of those people not being dependable tired of being disrespected uh, might get tired because they betrayed you a time or two talked bad about you behind your back tired because when you're bringing someone across the way and you're being a slave to somebody, that's some extra tasks on your plate. Some of us feel like we've already got enough on our plate. I'm already tired with what I just got to do. And it's okay to have seasons of going to the wilderness and, and re getting replenished by God and, and being able to get vision and direction and, and replenishment from, from the source. That's okay. But as we're slaving for people, most stuff is going to be on your plate. And it may even be so much that you may feel it tipping and I can't keep it all up. I can't handle my family, my wife, and my kids, and sister blah blah, and brother Kuni and, and all these uh, stressful people in the world. But this is the race that we're running. We must be prepared to win. Maybe in 2 Timothy chapter 4. See what else prepares us. Second Timothy chapter four. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry 
God has given you. It's always when you're studying on something and you're trying to change something in your life and work on something in your life where the devil just can frustrate us, can make us angry. And I don't want us to miss this part of this text where uh, the, the king, if you're reading the King James Version, is talking about sober, but really this word is talking about a clear mind and, and to be calm. How are we going to bring people across if we can't remain calm? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Has anyone dealt with some spiritually weak folk before? I'm getting ready to prepare this sermon. Tuesday, or uh, someday last week. I'm at work, and I'm talking about closed caption. I'm talking about being a living testimony. I'm talking about sharing and being the light. Okay. And I had an opportunity. Mm. Can I testify? Yeah. <laughs> a man, we just bought a property, and this property is, is uh, for lack of better terms, it's ghetto. It's a right down hasn't been managed properly in years. And this guy got used to parking his motorcycle bike and putting his chain and connected it to the doggone property sign. And I politely told the man, hey, can you please not drive in the grass and not park your guy, your, your bike? And connected to the sign. You have to park on, on the parking lot. Who are you? My God, oh God, here we go. I'm just the property manager. I'm trying to be humble, I'm just the property manager. <laughs> and he said, and I can't be all the way because he said some crazy words. But he pretty much said, you don't run this, I run this. And it's my job, how I feed my family is running this property. And we're talking about being closed captioned. At this point, can I be honest? And I said, next time you do it, I'm not going to ask again. I'm going to cut the chain and have it towed. <laughs> he didn't like that. So he ran up on me, trying to fight me. It's funny, you get tested when you ain't trying to fight, but when I was trying to fight, no one wanted to fight. So he runs up on me. I stay on my ground. You don't give your back. I stood my ground, looked him dead in his eyes. And some things don't even have to be said. You can kind of, some of us got some crazy that we still got in our heads. And he, he noticed, he's like, oh, this guy ain't scared. Which, I wasn't scared. I wasn't fearful. But he said, he turned around. He said, I got something for you. He went in his bike, grabbed the gun, cocked the gun on me, pointed at me. 
you got to work on some stuff. in your life, the pain in your life, the struggles 
in your life. The church's power comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we find common ground with folk, we must have the boldness to teach the gospel. My last point. Man, am I going home today? It's all right. Yo, Super Bowl don't, don't start till 3.30. Okay. I've been giving y'all 30 minutes every, every, I'll be nice on y'all all the time. So if I go a little long, then y'all charge it to the game, all right? We must have so much confidence that we expect to win. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. And this being poured out as an offering to God. Uh, the Greek word is, uh, let, let me not, libation, right? And it's kind of where we get our, our custom, I don't know if we have some gangsters or not uh, online or in here. I know we've got a few in here, but anyways. Uh, a libation is the concept. You ever had uh, someone take a 40 and say, this is for my dead homies? That's where this word comes from. That's where we got that practice from. And Paul says, it ain't about a drink. That is the offering. He says, my life. It's the offering that I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice to you, Lord. Alcohol won't do it. Put money in the plate won't do it. Come on. And it's interesting because this was Paul's last writings before he was beheaded. So in spite of him getting ready to die, he had faith that he was winning and expected to win because of his life being an outpour, a libation to the Father, knowing that he had spread the good news and brought me to Christ. Even in his last days, he was comforted in knowing that he was in it to win. Knowing he had been faithful to his purpose. Knowing that he had been faithful to spreading the gospel. Knowing that his Savior promised him a prize that would last for eternity. A prize that can't be bought. A prize that we didn't deserve. A prize worth living for. A prize worth dying for. A prize that no man can take from you. A prize that will last forever. And this prize represents victory. This prize represents overcoming adversity. This prize represents you not laboring in vain. When have you ever met a winner expect to lose?
Jesus was willing to die. The apostles were willing to die. The early church were willing to die as long as they could win. What are we willing to sacrifice to win? To bring souls to Christ, including your own. Are you willing to sacrifice that career? Are you willing to sac sacrifice that toxic relationship that's taking you away from God? Are you willing to sacrifice your sinful ways? Are you willing to sacrifice your finances, your time, your abilities, your comfortability, your pride, your ego? Think about a winner is that do whatever it takes to win. And when you are confident in your plan or in the plan that was given to us, in the preparation and the tools to be prepared and the training, we can confidently, confidently expect to hear that good and faithful servant. You were faithful with little. Trust you be faithful much. Is anyone tired of losing? Come be baptized now. 